to get up and change it. You always have to negotiate the time. The operators are responsible for all the costs. In, in liner shipping, all the cost is borne by the ship owner. So he also builds up his cost structure in such a way as to take care of everything that he is going to cater for. So his cost would have to do with maybe uh, uh, we would see as we go down he, what he's charging you for. He will give you a breakdown. In some countries, it's a must. You have to give them a breakdown of everything on the cost bill or item. You just don't get up and say that all inclusive is ten dollars and that is it. No. You have to say what every dollar is meant for on the, the cost structure sheet before they would allow you to, to operate. Okay. So the operators they are responsible for all the costs and they, they, they therefore build it into the the, the building. So the freight because they will be responsible for everything, then the faith will also take care of everything that they have to be responsible for. Another feature, typical feature of liner shipping is their uh, documents. The contract in a liner shipping is covered by a bill of lading, which is usually non-negotiable. It's not negotiated. So when you come, you bring them their goods, they take all the particulars, then they give you the bill of lading. The bill of lading is a document that would allow you to pick the cargo when it gets to its destination. So it is a document that shows that or goes to prove that you are the owner of the cargo. And because they deal with so many bills of lading, that is why their offices always are I mean, large, because they have to have every people dealing with all these things within a, the shortest possible time so that by the time the ship gets to the other end, the bills are of ladings are ready, the owners have their, their documents, and also they have all their manifests prepared and sent ahead for the, the cargoes to be dealt with. So they tend, that is why they tend to have quite a sophisticated build-up in their offices. Liner shipments are different types with, of operations and operators in the liner shipping. The operators and the, the operations are different, the setup. A typical the liner company would be made up of the board and then the husbandry at the next level you have the husbandry that, that is those that are keeping the ship seaworthy. You know, a ship needs continuous maintenance. Okay? They need to be taken care of, they need to be uh, the, the crew and then the, the maintenance, the research that they have to do, the purchasing that they have to do all comes under the husbandry division or, or department of the ship. Then you have the insurance department, they will be dealing with any legal claims and a lot of legal claims go on in shipping. A lot of us, we, we, we are I mean, oblivious of what is going on once we get our cargo. But take for example, your cargo comes in and you're not happy with the condition. You try to get the ship owner to pay for them. It will be the legal department that will have to be going to court for a settlement to be reached or going for arbitration for a settlement to be reached. Okay. Then you have the operating or economic employment department. They are the ones that look for cargoes for the ship. And then you have the secretary or the finance department. So you have quite a, a, a big setup for these uh, companies dealing in liner uh, trade. So the operations department is the, the main purpose is to maximize the economic employment of the ship. That is, they are concerned with re revenue. They are like the sales department in some companies, sales and marketing department. They are the people who go looking for business, isn't it? The sales and marketing department, they go looking for business for any setup so that they, 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 they will have more clients or more customers coming in. They do the coordination among the other departments of the company and also with the ship and agents. So it's a very busy department, the operations department in any uh, 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 liner shipping setup. It's a very busy department. It is labor intensive. Okay? It involves advertising, organizing the cargoes, and organizing the cargoes doesn't come cheap. 
you have to get people outlets. I mean, people contact persons all over the world to be doing the mobilization of cargo for you. So if, for example, your ship is coming to Ghana, then you have to have people who would get cargo for you. Because coming to Ghana, maybe you've got a full ship, but going back, you are going to go empty, and you don't want to do that. No uh, uh, sensible ship owner would want to be moving around the world half empty most of the time. Whenever they go to a place, they want to go back with something inside because that is the only time they'll get a return or some money is also coming into the kitty. So they always want to have canvases and agents in the various ports that they go to who would get them some cargo for that matter. Okay. And it is also labor intensive because of the documentation that goes with it. As I said, sometimes the bills of leading for a, a full load of cargo runs into the, 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 the hundreds. Of so many bills of leading to prepare for all the consignments that have come in. Because it, for, for a general cargo ship, I can decide to be shipping just Usually, for example, when we went to school, you just ship your small box containing your personal effects and everything. It's just a small box. You go and buy space in a container. The agent, the clearing and forwarding agent will come and take that cargo, and then he would consolidate it into a container. And then he has to give each of the owners a bill of lading okay, to show that the cargo, this cargo of this description belongs to me, it belongs to him or him or her. It has to have. So they deal with so many uh, clients through the agents, but then the documentation will be prepared separately. Because the fact that the agent has given you one container does not mean that that one container is all they will, they will receive documents for. He has to receive documents for all the other owners, part owners of the cargo in that container. So for that reason, they, they, their work is quite intensive. They have a lot of uh, people to cater for. The liner bills of lady may run into even thousands. They also have to do the scheduling and marketing, opening up of new routes, considerations of supply and demand factors. They will make sure that the where they are going. Sometimes some ship owners even refuse to go to certain places, especially where one they know that those spots are not efficient, and also when they go there, they are not going to get anything back, and it doesn't. It's not worth it taking the cargoes there, especially if the, the volume of the cargo uh, involved is not much. They wouldn't take it. Okay. So they have to look at the sources, uh, the forces of supply and demand in positioning their ships. They, they also have to consider the strength of competition, especially when they are involved in a conference. I would explain conference when we come down there. When they are maintained in a certain locality, they have to maintain their schedules. That is one very important factor in the liner shipping. You have to be, to be known to be reliable or dependable. If your ship calls here and people get to know you and then you start because now you've captured the market, today you come to work, tomorrow you don't come and that sort of thing, it shouldn't happen. Or you are late for when the delivery of the cargoes, it shouldn't happen because in some places, because of the way they, they, they structure their, their economic activities, it goes to derail most of their activities and they are not very happy and that happens. So you have to have very, very good um, uh, uh, ment uh, schedules, maintaining your schedules to combat the problems of delays, strikes, shutdowns, breakdowns, annual dry docks. All of these, they have to take cater for it. The marketing department have to, in the operations department, have to cater for all these things. They have to be able to know. For example, if ship A, was the one flying between Tema, uh, between Tema and Accra, but it has to go to the dry docks. They will make sure they position another ship to take its place. You don't say that because my ship is at the dry docks, you should wait, your cargo should wait when she comes out. They will quickly have to make sure there's a stopgap measure to deal with the stoppage. Otherwise, before
before you realize all your customers have gone out. And it isn't easy getting the customers. Shipping is very competitive. There are so many ships around in the world. So if you don't maintain that level of confidence, trust, and reliability, you lose your customers. And it's very difficult to woo them back especially when they go and the other person is treating, treating them very well. They will not come back. And if you don't get the customers, then you have no business running the, the shipping line. So it's very, very important that they maintain their schedules. The marketing department under the operations, they will look at the product analysis, traffic, market development, promotion, and the product uh, development. That is, they, they, they make sure that they have studied the market in that locality. How viable is that market? Before they go in, they will study it. And whilst they are in, they are continuously watching the, the trends in the market to make sure that if they think that, for example, I'm just using it as an example, the pundits, the time the, 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 the tension was building up between the Russians and the Ukrainians, some of them saw it and they quickly moved their ships and went to flag it somewhere else. They don't want to be going to that place where they can be caught in the problem.